something people ask all the time is like, how far is too far with chastity? And that's kind of already the wrong question. Because Hello everybody, my name is Adam Cross. I'm an associate marriage and family therapist in Southern California. I work for a nonprofit group called Still Point Family Resources, and I'm also a youth minister at our local Catholic parish. Um, <clears throat> so today I want to talk about something that is probably one of the most misunderstood things of all time. Um, chastity. <laughs> so <clears throat> chastity is so easily confused and so misunderstood. Um, on so many levels. I've, I've encountered this in a million different ways. Um, one of the things is that at some point, in one way or another, somebody always experiences a chastity talk. And in my personal encounters, I've met a lot of people who have had very bad chastity talks. I personally haven't. Um, you know, I, I've seen a lot of great stuff like Jason Everett, Christine Lena Everett, um, and they have amazing stuff on chastity, but there's always, you know, like this one lady at church that gives a chastity talk and it just goes terribly wrong. So I want to talk about chastity today a little bit because um, it gets a really bad rap, like so bad that people don't even know what they're talking about when they use the word chastity. Uh, even before going into it, I think one of the things I'll say is that chastity is not celibacy, okay? Celibacy is a choice to live and abstain from sex for the rest of your life right so you think of priests take a vow of celibacy right they're promising to abstain from from sexual relations um even you know romantic relationships um for the rest of their lives they're making that choice chastity is not that <laughs> right it may be part of it integrated but it's not celibacy right married people have chastity single people have chastity right um Everybody has chastity, and that might sound kind of funny, but to put it simply, chastity is the right ordering of our desires. That's it, right? The right ordering of our desires. I mean, you could even expand chastity out, like take a broader view, kind of like zoom out, and say that chastity applies to pretty much everything we do, like our priorities. What are our priorities? How chaste are we with how much Netflix we watch, you know? Like, do we just give in and binge all the Netflix shows that we want? Or do we moderate? Do we control how much so that's a healthy amount, right? That might sound like a ridiculous analogy, but it's true. So when we're looking at how do we order our desires, we have to look at how do we look at other people? Living chastity, like living chastely means ordering our thoughts and our actions, right? to the appropriate extent. It might mean in a relationship between a boyfriend and a girlfriend, is something people ask all the time, is like, how far is too far with chastity? And that's kind of already the wrong question because if somebody's asking how far can I go, like sexually, then they're missing the point, right? Ordering our desires first means that the recognizing that the other person is a person, right? The other person is not just a body. Right? So we've already taken like, okay, they're a person, but they have an attractive body. And the attractive body, I'm going to put up here. And who they are and what they're made for, I'm going to put down here. It's not ordered at all. God um, calls each person for absolutely love. Right? St. John Paul II says that um, ultimately each person is made for love, with love, and in love. We're not made for anything else. We're not made for use. Right? We're not made for objectification. We're not made for lust. Right? Chastity is putting that in the right order. Right, Recognizing it, putting it first, is that we are human beings. We are beloved sons and daughters of God. That is our identity, and that is who we are, and that is how we should be respected and treated. So chastity is putting those things in the right order. Not just looking at somebody's body parts, right, or what we could get out of somebody, but how we can love somebody. That's how we're supposed to treat people. And that's the goal of chastity, right? It's not about like saying no, you know, to everything. Like sex is bad. You know, you can't do this. You can't do that. Like that's what the world views chastity as, but that's not chastity. Chastity is saying no to the things that ultimately harm us and aren't good for us. Like lusting after somebody's body and ignoring the fact that their body, mind, and soul isn't good for them 
isn't good for us, right? And, and it's ridiculous to think that chastity is a bad thing, right? Because we want to acknowledge the whole person. Chastity acknowledges what a human being is made for, which is love. The world offers us two options. The world says, you know, just if you have desires, any desires at all, you can either repress them, like shove them down into a box in your mind, pretend like they're not there, and eventually they'll probably explode, right? Because repression isn't really a good thing. Or you should just act on all your desires and own it, right? Because you're there, they're going to happen, so just own it. But faith gives us a third option. Faith says don't push your desires down and pretend like they're not there. We're human beings. Human beings have desires. That's natural. Also, don't give in to everything you desire. Because if you give in to everything you desire, you actually become addicted to that. And you can kind of think of all the examples of people giving into stuff and becoming addicted to things. The Catholic faith says, don't repress, but don't also give in. But first, give your desires to God. And also, master your desires, right? Again, it's putting our desires in the right order involves mastering them. What does that look like? Okay, that means reordering and reorienting our mind that if we have a tendency to lust after people or to look at people's bodies and forget that they're a human being, that we're reorienting ourselves to get to know the person and not just the body, right? It means little things um, like protecting what we watch, like protecting our eyes, not watching things that are going to lead us to lust, right? Lust is like taking somebody or, or utilizing their body, forgetting who they are. It also means um, like building our prayer lives, right? Staying focused on Christ and recognizing that the human person is made for love and not for use. A big thing with chastity and helping us reorder our, our desires is fasting, right? If we have trouble saying no to certain things, like if our mind goes to a place of lust or looking at somebody's, you know, characteristics and not the whole person, um, it can be hard to say no to ourselves or to turn that off. But a huge thing that can help is actually fasting, like saying no to little things. Like I'm going to say no to watching this Netflix show. And these little ways that we can stop ourselves can actually help us stop ourselves from lusting, from giving in to um, sin and in these disordered desires. We all have sexual desires, right? If you don't, you might want to see a doctor, right? Sexuality is natural and sex is good. And the Catholic faith teaches that, right? That sex is good and that sexuality is good and normal, right? But we also have to put that in the right context. We're not called to give in to everything that we feel or want, right? We're also not called to shove it all down, right? Chastity means being, um, being the master of, of your own will, right? With God's help, right? Um, things like exercise and journaling and a good prayer life, even a good spiritual director, frequenting the sacraments, right? Can be huge tools to living a chaste life. There's a, a quote that I really liked. It said, you know, you can't be chaste alone, right? And that sounds funny because it's like, well, usually you have to be, <laughs> you can't be lustful alone. Well, you can, um, but you can't be chaste alone or you can't be abstinent alone. You need, you need support. You need community because you're human and you can have desires and you need people who are going to build you up, who are going to encourage you, who are going to pick you up when you fall. Um, chastity is, is not about saying no over and over and over again, just for the sake of it. Chastity is really saying yes to, to real love, to authentic love. So think of chastity, not so much as like some old lady giving you a bad talk saying sex is wrong. Cause that, that's not what chastity is, but think of chastity as a way that you can live a healthier life, a happier life, a holier life, right? That you are in this beautiful pursuit of love itself and not getting distracted by things of this world, but staying focused on love itself, staying focused on God, right? For the love he's calling you to, which is true love, which is pure love, which is being able to look at another and see who they really are, to see them as God sees them. And that is the foundation of chastity. 
So this is a huge topic, and if you have any questions, comments, I'd love to hear them. I'd love to do a lot more videos on chastity. I love this topic. Um, so feel free to you know shoot me an email, comment, give this video a like, subscribe, um, check out my website, and thank you so much for watching, and God bless.